What's up guys, we are in Denver, Colorado at Freedom Service Dogs of America. This is the next charity that we are partnering with for giveaway number four. Scott, tell us about Freedom Service Dogs. Freedom Service Dogs uh, of America. They're dogs. <laughs> They help people. <laughs> and a little bit of change of pace. Charity number one that we partnered with, Meals on Wheels. Charity number two, Wounded Warrior Project. Both great organizations. Yeah. But we thought it would be fun to lighten the mood a little bit. Yeah, like with COVID and everything going on in the world, like... We need puppies. Everyone loves dogs, so... Freaking puppies. Yeah. So we are here in Denver. We flew out with our film crew, Jason, Kevin. Flip the cameras around so everyone can see you guys. <laughs> We're going to hang out with some pups. We are going to hear all about this organization and the services that they provide for families and for veterans. And we're super, super stoked on it. Yeah. And today is puppy playtime. Only happens a couple times a week. That's why we flew in for it. Yeah. So, all right. Hope you enjoy it. Let's go check it out. We are about to meet their staff and their team and they are gonna walk us through who they are, what they do, and how the funds that you all are gonna raise will help them out. Let's do it. Welcome! Welcome! We're so excited oh. to have you! Alright! This is Michelle, Nadine, and Alex, and they are going to walk us through their beautiful facility. Michelle, give us a little bit of a history of FSD, and what you guys are all about, and how the funds are going to be used. Absolutely. So our mission is to unleash the potential of dogs by transforming them into custom-trained, life-changing assistance dogs for people in need. Okay. And we serve veterans with post-traumatic stress, um, and traumatic brain injury, children with autism and other neurocognitive disabilities, as well as children and adults um, and teens who have mobility challenges, wow. like spinal cord injuries, MS, cerebral palsy. Dogs, trucks, and cash. Could it get any better? <laughs> no, my truck's right outside. So I'm hoping for little accessories or something. You know? So these are our founders. We were established in 1987. This is Michael and PJ Roche and our very first FSD dog Oreo. Fun fact, Scott's favorite cookie is Oreo. Huge fan. Huge <laughs> fan. That's so, perfect. This is <laughs> Again, we serve veterans with post-traumatic stress, uh, traumatic brain injury, uh, people with mobility issues, as well as children with autism and other neurocognitive disabilities. And what was once impossible, leaving the basement as a veteran who has severe PTSD is now possible. Wow. Our dogs allow them to take that first step and the next step so that they can truly re-engage with their family, with their lives, with their communities. It's absolutely life-changing. That's incredible. Yeah, how many volunteers do you have? We have about 350 volunteers who help us out. Wow. We could wow. not do this work without our volunteers. So this is our training room. Um, we want to, I mean, our goal with our dogs is to expose them to anything and everything that a client um, may expose the dog to. And yes, we do have <laughs> Yep, this really does work. They really do train dogs here, I can confirm. With our veterans, often they want to reduce their anxiety in public. Um, so if, you know, we all have telltale signs, right, when we're anxious. You know, it may be like a curling of the hair, it may be a tapping of the foot, it may be, you know, doing something like this. So we actually teach the dog what that telltale tell -tell sign is of the veteran, and then that dog interrupts that behavior. So if, if the person is tapping, the dog will actually put their paws on the veteran's foot. If it's this, the, 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 the nose will come up and, and move the hand to just reorient that veteran to the present time um, so they aren't anxious. So this is our apartment um, that we created. You know, we teach our dogs um, to tug an open fridge, they can get uh, water bottles or medication out of the fridge, they can tug open drawers. What about a cold one? Could they get you a cold one? You know, if, if it's on the same shelf every time you're consistent, thank you, Joel. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Don't mind me. <laughs> What's the percentages of dogs? Is it 30%, 30%, 30% of, is it more veterans? It's more veterans. Okay. It's usually around 40 to 50% are veterans okay. each year. Um, and then a smaller percentage are children with autism okay. and then the remainder people with mobility challenges. Okay. Yep. So we have five kennel pots uh, for our adult dogs that are in for training. Our dogs um, return to FSD about 14, 15 months uh, for their adult training. So prior to that, they've been, um, they were born here, uh, eight weeks of age to go to our prison program. So we actually have a partnership with the Colorado State Prison. Um, so our dogs are with inmates 24 seven for two months. 
and the inmates are teaching them how to you know do crate training and potty training and all those basic obedience uh, tasks like loose leash walking sit stay um, so it's a really unique partnership at that age, so they're about six months at that point, they go to the homes of puppy raisers. And so they're with the puppy raisers from six months until about 14 months of age. Our staff are working with them on a monthly basis, so all of our puppy raisers come in for a training once a month as well as doing an outing together once a month. Um, so this is our adult dogs in training. So you see that we have different, you know, we have a lowered glass, some opaque doors. The goal for us is to, you know, just reduce the stress for that dog. So obviously a dog's gonna be living here, you know, four to six months for adult training. Um, we do have amazing volunteers who take the dogs home on weekends to give them a break. Um, but because they are going to be here so long, we want this to be a welcoming environment that they enjoy. And then again, our volunteers are amazing. So they do a lot of activities in the kennels with the dogs. So they'll do games, enrichment, toys, um, just to again make that kennel a welcoming space for the dogs. Some of our clients have allergies or family members have allergies but they still need to service dogs. So we always try to have some poodles or doodles um, in training uh, so that they can be served by a service dog without having um, allergies. Puppy time. We're going to get all geared up to okay. meet the puppies. Okay. So the ones that you'll be meeting are eight weeks old, so they have all their vaccinations. But we do have puppies here who are not old enough for their vaccines, so we want to make sure we're nice and clean and not bring anything to those guys. We're going to so, see the puppies. We got our scrubs on because they're little guys and we got to, you know, protect them. Uh, some of them do have a yes, diarrhea please. problem right now. So here we go. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. I'll take it back to show you Coco. <laughs> this is Ronan. No. Oh my gosh. Oh. We this, to surprise you guys. This is Ronan? Thank you. We, we uh, wanted to name a puppy after, oh after you guys gosh. and what you're doing. Oh, hello! Oh, yes! I know, I know, I know. I know. Uh, Hi, Ronan. Hi! Are we going to raise a lot of money for your brothers and sisters? Yeah. <laughs> you guys named him Ronan? Yeah. Oh, my God. Whoever gets this one gets liquor. Yeah. And then we'll give you updates on Ronan. Yes. So you'll know how he's doing in training. This is so bad. <laughs> yeah, you're so cute. Flash. Recovery back. The best thing that Ava and I, I, I didn't realize until she was in my life, um, that for me, like I said, that, that sport, that sense of being an athlete, she's a super athletic dog. And uh, me getting to kind of be a partner to that, to be a coach in a way, um, has been uh, more rewarding than I could have, could have hoped for. Um, literally, she's a cattle dog shepherd mix and the, the cattle dog in her. Uh, there's a, a state park that we go to and it is just a dog heaven and she, I can sit there and watch her run these amazing, like she looks like a racehorse, you know, no dogs, like she's pretty alpha and she loves to play chase and it's like you chase me and no dogs can catch her and it just, it lights me up because mm -hmm. that's what I, I, I miss and I can experience that through her. Um, and again, I never would have known that. She does do, you know, really cool things like in out in public. Um, when we go shopping, she'll, you know, she'll, I drop things. She'll get the, 
she'll get the, the wallet, the keys, the, the whatever's been knocked off the shelf. But literally for me, just those connections, the time when I'm you know, at the dog park, there's some agility and I'll you know, watch her and coach her to jump over the hurdles or she's fearless with water and just dive into the water and start swimming. Um, it just, for me, like I said, it really is a, a moment of joy that I, I really didn't know that would be possible. I'm currently a civilian firefighter up there in uh, Cheyenne at F.E. Warren Air Force Base. Um, there I'm the assistant chief for fire prevention. Um, I was teamed up with Champion, a uh, two-year-old uh, yellow lab, uh, back in March. I was a uh, Air Force firefighter uh, for 16 years and um, I was diagnosed with uh, Meniere's disease and uh, was medically retired. Tell us what Meniere's disease is. So Meniere's is um, it's uh, an inner ear disease. Uh, you get bad vertigo. Okay. Um, the severity depends on on each person. Um, losing my, my hearing in the left ear. Um, so we can be talking now, and I can have a drop attack and just kind of go down now, or uh, have you know quick bouts of vertigo or longer term bouts of vertigo. Um, and it's something that they haven't been able to find a fix for, or wow. they don't even know really how it even comes about. So how does Ch Champion help you when you have one of those bouts or one of those those segments of feeling completely like you're gonna you're gonna go down? Yeah, so um, if we're out and about, um, like right now, um, I'll, I'll kind of go down to the ground. He'll lay his head on me, reassure me, kind of make sure everything's okay. Um, I carry my medications in that pouch. Okay. Um, so if I'm kind of um, incoherent, somebody's able to kind of, an EMT or somebody can come up and kind of administer those pills. Yeah. Um, or if I'm good to go, I can take those pills myself. Wow. Um, at home, he's actually being taught how to, to retrieve a person. So we're practicing with my wife. So if I'm on uh, the first floor and she's upstairs, I'll say, hey, go find Sharon, my wife, and, and he'll go find her and bring her back towards me. Um, or he'll go retrieve a phone. So if I'm home by myself, he'll, he'll go retrieve a phone. Wow. Back in uh, 2018, um, right before Christmas, I actually uh, fell down the stairs. I got dizzy and actually fractured my C7. Um, so they ended up, I ended up having a neck surgery. So I got my C6 and C7 fused now. Uh, but without him, I, I actually had to climb back up the stairs um, in pain and, and before I could finally get my wife. So now with him, if that it happens, I can tell him, hey, you know, go find my wife or go find somebody and be able to get somebody. So this isn't just a blessing for you, but for peace of mind for your family, oh, yes. for your oh, daughters, yes. for your wife. Yes. And he's, he's part of the family now. Oh, he is part of the family. So for our customers that are going to be raising funds for Freedom Service Dogs of America, how, what would you say to them in terms of how this has directly impacted your life and the encouragement for them to donate or make a purchase during this next giveaway? Yeah, definitely. Um, Freedom Service Dogs, are, they're, Freedom Service Dogs actually, they're, they're an awesome organization. Um, they only get so many dogs a year. Um, they don't just go to the to the pound and get a dog. They actually find you know good certified dogs and stuff. And there is there's a lot of people on the waiting list. I've heard people that have been on it for five, six, seven, eight right. years. Um, and it, they're with people's donations and, and stuff, they're able to get more dogs and be able to go you know look farther out in, into the state right than what they're doing now and, and be able to you know get better facilities for them or whatever they have a high-tech facility now i know it's, it's pretty new so um you know just be able to expand on that would be awesome yeah so i think that's a, a great personal testament of what a dog can actually do and we are hoping that the funds that you guys are going to raise we're, we're going to shoot for a million dollars again that would be a tangible impact on so many people's lives. So, you heard from Josh, you see Champion, we're at the facility, we really wanna encourage you guys to make a purchase, a portion of the proceeds from every purchase is gonna go back to FSD. And again, you don't have to make a purchase, go online and donate directly. Every $1 donated is still gonna get you entered to win. So, Josh, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon.